won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming love. Praise God. Love me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. All right, on that verse where it says, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood, I want you to say, praise God. I know the people listening at home, they only hear me saying praise God. And the people here only hear me saying praise God because I'm the only one saying praise God. So let me hear you say it. Say praise God. Praise God. All right, now let's do it on that verse, on the third. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the street of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angel singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise God. Love me ere I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I'll be nice to you. I won't scold you for not doing that great of a praise God. People at home are probably like, man, they sounded great, but all they hear is me. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, remember to think about our pastor, preacher, and his wife took the kids, and they went down to Ohio. I don't, it's going to Ohio is a vacation. Ohio, probably the worst state in the United States of America. Yeah, he went down there to get a haircut, didn't he? Wow, and to go out to eat. I heard him talking about going down there to Olive Garden, going out to eat. He, they're down there, out to eat. Amen. He's getting a flat top, too. Wow, that's a, we got a prophet here. He's predicting pastor's going to have a flat top. So is Brother yeah, Jeff. We'll see. So is Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff's letting his hair grow out during all of this. He looks a mess. Brother, you need to trim it up. They, they, to go to the wall? Praise God for the Waffle House. Wow. That's a trip. Thanks for inviting me. Not offended at all. But, well, let's pray for this service and we'll get things started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for those that have taken the time, Lord. They've gotten ready and though we are at home, we're comfortable, Lord, and, and we're, we're resting over the weekend and getting prepared for work. They've taken the time to come to the house, Lord. And for those tuning in, Lord, that, uh, that you'd be with the man of God, Brother Lefebvre, as he's going to bring the message to us. Holy Spirit, give him clarity, clear his mind of all distractions, and just give him the word to preach to us. And Lord, as we come through uncertain times, Lord, where the minority rules, and Lord, as they try to shut our voices, we're thankful for the word of God that is a rock. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what might happen with my job. I don't know what might happen at work. I don't know what freedoms might be taken from me. But one thing that I know is sure, God, and that is your word. We're going to open up and hear your word. And I pray that it would strengthen us and it would encourage us and it would challenge us and it would convict us.
Holy Spirit, please just move in and help us to move out of the way and let you have your way in this service. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. Just a, We really don't have any announcements because, like as Pastor says, we just play it day by day. You never know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, There could be riots in Whitmore Lake. I don't know about that, but you never know. I would hope not, but so we're playing it day by day to see what happens, but this Wednesday, this is important, this Wednesday, 6.30, we've been meeting at 6 o'clock, but we're going back to 6.30 on our Wednesday evening service, so if you're tuning in and pastors already scolded you, you can be here now. Some people didn't get the memo, they were here this morning and they're not here tonight, but church is back on and you have no excuse to not be here. Well, I, I, well, I'm scared. Well, you're not scared to go to the grocery store and let them handle all your food and your plastic bags, and then you touch that keypad that's got all those germs on it, and then you pick your nose and eat it. You know, I mean, you 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 got the disease. Or some of you are the disease. You Corona would be the best thing you got. Some of you got some funky disease. So you got no excuse to not be here at church. No excuse. If you're willing to stand in line to get food, then you can come to church. And I know some of us, I know some of us smell nasty, Brother Norm. I know. <laughs> he said amen for those of you listening. No, Brother, Brother Norm, he's hand sanitizer. He takes a bath in the hand sanitizer when he gets in here. But we have clean facilities, all right? You, we, you don't have to shake anybody's hand. Praise the Lord. I don't want to touch your hand. Even if there wasn't COVID, I don't want to touch your hand. All right? I already, I already caught somebody. I'm not going to name names, but somebody went to shake my hand today. I almost kicked him out of the church. That's how serious we take it around here. So you can be at church. You have no excuse. All right? The only person that's going to protect you from COVID-19 is Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what. You, you want to be on his good side. So guess what? His attendance list, when he's going down there, like, oh, well. oh, hey, you were at church, so why not just be on God's good side? Read your Bible, come to church, pray, you know, come in here, pretend like you love everybody here, even though you don't. Some of you, I know, but come here, and we'd love to see you. We'd love to see this building full again, and, and, and trust me, listen, I, I look at the news, and I look at these things, and I say, I, I don't know, I don't even know what's safe to say anymore. I don't know how long this freedom's going to last, and they're trying to take it away. How long, Pastor, will be able to say a message like this morning in a year that might, might, might send him to prison for that? And it might be a lot, lot shorter than a year. So we need to come while we can. Because if you won't come while you can, you're definitely not going to come when you can't come. Oh, well, we'll just have secret church and I'll go. You don't even go when you can come now. All right? So I, just a little prep for when Elliot gets up here, you guys will be all fired up and then he can tear into you about something. <laughs> but that's, that's all we have going on. And, and like I said, he said, you might come here Sunday in the tent set up. Who knows what we're going to be doing? That would be a blast, huh? Um, meeting under the tent. That, trust the heat under the tent. If we get it out in the sun, nothing can survive under the heat in that tent. They're like 200 degrees under that thing. Trust, been on that thing a million times. That, that gets hot. That'll bake the germs out. But so who knows what we're going to do? Who knows what plans? He, I mean, pastors freed up through the month of June. All of his tent meetings have canceled. And just pray about that. I mean, that's, a, that is, that's souls now that don't get to hear the gospel. That's, I mean, that's sad. That's a sad state to be in. And so pray for that. We support that. That's our church-supported ministry. You've, you've put money into the offering plate that's gone to that ministry, and now we can't use that ministry. So pray for that ministry. Pray for the tent ministry. Pray for our soul winning efforts that we're, as we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. We've been working on some packets and some things that we might be able to hang on doors. Just go and give them a little packet, give them some information, and, and, and try to get out there because knocking on people's doors at this time might be a little sketchy. So we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to work through that. And the Lord's using, listen to this, the Lord's going to use ungodly people to get his word out. Isn't that something? The Lord will use what he has to use. The Lord's, put, the Lord's put me in a position where I can do something about it using some ungodly person's money. And you know what? I'm going to use it. <laughs> I'm going to use it. And it's going to spread the gospel and he won't even know. Well, he'll know because I'll tell him. But 
So pray for these things. Pray as we, we still have, a, we have to have an outreach ministry. What's the point of having church if we're not telling other people about God? It, it, it's difficult. I know I work. Listen, 6 o'clock Wednesday evening, that's me, getting, that's me getting in my car at work, driving 51 minutes home to get my wife and kids to immediately come here. I barely make it here at 6 o'clock. By the time I, and that, there's no traffic right now. I have the luxury of the traffic. When there's traffic, I, I barely make it. So I understand that, that not all of us can get here for soul winning. We can get, but do your part. Pray. We have our tithes. We have our offerings. We have all these avenues for you to be involved. As a, as a prayer, we say, well, I can't. We need the prayer. When I went to, at Harvest Baptist, when we drove around, they had a van that would drive around with people in it that weren't able to go soul winning, they just go around and pray. They drove around where we had all those college kids going out knocking doors. They would drive around those areas where we're at and they would just go around and they would pray in a van driving around for us. Well, they were doing their part. Any souls that were saved are, are going to go on. They're, they're going to get rewards for that in heaven. So we, there is always something that you can do. And we need help in the nursery, ladies, as we're going to have a Sunday morning nursery. Get involved. If you have kids, you should be in the nursery. I mean, that should just be a given. You want someone else to watch your kids, but you're not willing to go down there. You know, you know, you know, you got brats. You know, when you my kids are brats. All right, I know it. My wife will be down there, and I, I'll tell them to be good on the days you're down there. If you go down there, because that'll go real far. They listen to me real well. Yeah, and I do know that pastor. We're gonna nail him for this one. He might be listening right now. Our pastor forgot somebody's birthday this morning. Little Lily's birthday. She's got her hand up. She knows it. Was. Are you mad because Pastor forgot your birthday? She's shaking her head. Yes, Pastor, if you're listening. She is that a tear? I see. It's okay. We remember. Oh yes, it was a tear. Oh well, bless her heart. Let's sing Happy Birthday to Lily. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. How old did you turn, Lily? She's got four up? Four already? When are you going to get a job and move out? Soon? She doesn't know. She doesn't know what I'm saying. Four years old. Oh, wow. Alrighty. Well, you know what? Let's grab your songbook. Why don't you stand up, get some blood going. Let's get you moving. You've been sitting all afternoon. I know I was. I sat all afternoon and just enjoyed the nice breeze coming in the window. Wife brought me some, uh, I had vegan chili cheese fries. Vegan chili cheese fries. It's good. I know. Listen, listen. She's listening now. I can't say anything. It was good. No, it was very good. All right, turn to page number 200. The old account was settled. Page number 200. We'll sing the first, the second, and that last verse. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven all the count was standing for sins yet unforgive. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper and sold it long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Hallelujah, and the record's clear today for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled, long ago. I'm going to yell at you again. There's a hallelujah in there. You see it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. However you want to say it. You, you put a little southern twang on it. Miss Valentine will put a southern twang on it. That West Virginia southern accent. So when we get there, let me hear you say hallelujah on that second verse. The old account was large and growing every day, for I was always sinning and never tried to pay. But when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe, I said that I would settle. I settled it long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Hallelujah, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, on that last, 
O sinner, seek the Lord, repent of all your sin, for thus he hath commanded, if ye would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, up there you'll not regret it, you sold it long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Records clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. All right, you may be seated. All right, we're going to have, we're going to get right into it. We have our offering place set up in the back, and you already know about our online giving. You've been giving. I've used it myself, real easy to just go right on there. You can sign up, you can download the app that's called. Um, What's that? Easy Tithe. Easy Tithe. And you can set up an account on there. And it, then when you go on our website, you have to log in and put your card information in every time. If you download that app, Easy Tithe, you're able to put all your information in there. It saves it. So you can go on there and just boop, boop, boop. You know, just put your amount and tithe. $1 million from Brother Chris Hamilton. I, you know, that was a prophecy, I think. The Lord just gave that to me. He's going to give a million dollars. He wishes. He, we wish. But uh, you've been faithful in that. And so what we're going to do, though, is get your Bible, get your sword. And what you're going to do is you're going to zip your lips. If you've got those kids at home, tell them to be quiet. Tell them to sit down, gather around the fireplace, and listen as the Word of God's open. Brother Elliot's coming. All righty, if you have your Bible, would you open it and turn to the book of Proverbs? Proverbs in chapter number 14. We'll read just one. Uh, verse out of that portion of scripture that we'll jump around tonight. Do pray for our pastor while he's away. A little bit of a short notice uh, trip. And so be praying for him as they're away. I wish that uh, he were here tonight preaching. Uh, I feel like his preaching has been uh, on fire and on point the past few weeks. And so the only good thing that's come out of COVID is our pastor has had some good preaching. And so praise the Lord for it. And uh, I want to read you something. This is a, uh, a message before the message. It was uh, something that I read in my daily Bible reading, and it was just this morning that I read it. And it's in Psalms 1, uh, 118, verse number 8 says this, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It goes a step further in verse number 9. It says this, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. And I thought about that as I read that this morning and everything that's going on in our world, we all can agree, absolute chaos. And as I read that, I thought, there's one thing that a child of God has in these day and age that we're living in. And that's we don't put our confidence in what's going on in the world. We don't put our confidence in our governor and our senators. We put our confidence in the Lord. And I think he's going to take us through this and we'll be just fine. And so uh, there you go. That's the message. Let's all just go home. Uh, I wish it were that easy. Uh, you're in Proverbs chapter number 14, verse number 34. Verse number 34 of Proverbs chapter number 14 says this. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That word righteousness here in the scriptures is purity of heart, and it means holiness. I believe that's you and I as Christians. We ought to have this so that we can keep sin at bay in our country. You know, a lot worse things would be going on if there weren't Christians in our world today, in our, in our communities, in our cities, in our country. A lot worse things would be going on. If you read the book of the Revelation, when we're all out of here, it's 10 times as worse as, 100 times as worse as what it is right now. But from that portion of scripture, we're not going to stay there primarily. We're going to jump around in our Bibles tonight. I want to preach to you on this subject. What does America need right now? What does America need? I believe that there's many people that are asking that very question. I'm sure that there's people right now that are at home that are tuned in to Fox News, CNN, whatever news outlet it is that they go to, I'm sure they're tuned into it and they're devastated by what's going on in our country. And they're, maybe they're scratching their head going, what is it that we need? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. Lord, I ask that you'd be with our preacher as he's away. I miss him when he's not here. I miss uh, the message uh, that he would have. But Lord, I'm honored to stand uh, behind his pulpit and to preach the word of God. And I don't take this lightly. Uh, Lord, you know that I'm not worthy to do this. But Lord, I ask that you would use the message 
Would you speak to a heart tonight, maybe by way of live stream, maybe somebody here in the audience in the building tonight. Lord, I ask that each and every person that's here and those that are watching by way of live stream, that you would keep them safe this week. Would you watch over them? We can see the things that are going on in our country and it's troubling on every hand, everywhere we turn, it seems like something bad's going on. Lord, you protect us and we know that you do. And I'm glad that we don't put our confidence in man, we put our confidence in you and you'll take good care of us. Would you be with us this night? Use this message in your precious and holy name, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. What does America need right now? A few weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, actually, I should say, we had COVID-19 come on the scene, and what a setback that was in our country. And now as we've progressed through this, and uh, we've seen a lot of people that have been diagnosed with it, and tragically, we've lost uh, quite a few people in the United States of America due to this illness that has gone around. Uh, right here within our state, we've lost a lot of people, and our numbers are in the 50,000 of how many people have been diagnosed with it. And they came out uh, with a stimulus package for everybody. And uh, maybe at that point, they said, what's right for America right now? And they said, well, let's... working on a second stimulus package, but all of those things are not what America needs right now. There's Americans that think that we need uh, a vaccine for this disease that's going on. Although we do need that, that's not what America needs right now. A lot of people right now are rallying and they are not so much protesting as much as they are destroying places that they ought not to. But they're going around and they're promoting stuff and they're saying, this is what America needs right now. We need this stuff to stop. That's what America needs right now. And unfortunately, the, the agenda that they're pushing is not what America needs right now. America doesn't need a new president right now. America doesn't need more senators right now. Uh, I can tell you Michigan needs a new governor right now, but we'll leave it just like that. But that's not what we need right now. We don't need new mayors. We don't need new uh, this or that. What we need is God. That's the only thing that's going to get us through this. And I know that I'm speaking to the crowd tonight. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir tonight. These are things that you know. But as I begin to watch last night, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't know much of what was going on. I have been working tirelessly. Don't tell our fine governor that I've been working. But it seems like since COVID happened, Brother Jerry, I, my phone has been off the hook with people that need me. But I sat down for a second and I turned on the television to everything that's going on in our country. And I know as well as you, you turned on your TV and you saw what's going on. And you know what happened? Brother Norm, my heart broke for my country. I got angry and then I got sad. And then I began to think, what does America need right now? I'll be honest with you, I had a whole message typed up and ready to go. This is only the first page of it. Man, I had this thing ready to go. But as I was sitting there last night, the Lord started to lay things on my heart. And this is all that I have tonight. But I believe it's what the Lord wants me to talk about. And as I began to watch that, I thought, what does America need right now? And you know what is sad about the whole situation is they've closed the doors to churches. And church is the number one thing that America needs right now. America needs men of God to stand behind a sacred desk and to preach the word of God, even if that is through live stream. I believe it ought to be with the doors open and those that are needy can come in. This is a hospital for our community. You say it is? It is. It's people that can come here that are hurting, that have scars, that we'll be able to mend with Jesus Christ like he did for us. Remember when you were a sinner and you were on your way to hell? Man, that church, that church service that you went to, and maybe it was something that you heard uh, that impacted your heart to get saved, but church has always stood as a beacon in this country. Truth has always come from the church house. It's never come from anywhere else. It seems half the time, most of the things that, we come, uh, that come from the White House are a lie. Most of the things that come from uh, the mayor's uh, dwelling up there in Lansing is a lie. But the only place that we can get truth is in church. Amen. This is the pillar and the ground of truth. And when you close the doors of the church, you can see what goes on. Would there be riots going on had the church doors been open? Had bus routes been able to get out there? And I understand that COVID is a very real thing. I am not making light of that, not one iota. But what I'm saying is, if we'd have been out there knocking on doors and trying to help people, suicide's on an all-time high. Uh, OD is at an all-time high. I have brother-in-laws that are firefighters, and their calls for suicide and their calls for overdoses are at an extreme right now. 
because people don't know what's going on. And they're thinking, what is best for America right now? And the Lord laid a couple of things on my heart. And I think the first one is probably the most important one. And the first one that I want to look at is prayer. Prayer is important for our country, is it not? Every Wednesday, we try to get together. And uh, this last, it's probably been a year now, that we kind of change gears with our Wednesday evening. And we've kind of devoted more time to prayer. And you know, that's what it ought to be. Uh, for so long, you've heard Wednesday evening Bible study and prayer time. And it seems like we were having more Bible study. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's what we come to church for, is it not? But there's something about prayer. And as I begin to think about that, I thought of one man in the Bible. Turn over to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter number one and verse number three and four says this. As you're turning, I'll begin reading. And they said unto me, this being Nehemiah, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Verse number four says this. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You know, that's what we ought to do. When we turn on the television like I did last night, I saw, Brother Norm, what was going on. And something welled up inside of me, a bit of anger. And I said, why would they do that? Just a few short weeks ago, they were uh, standing on their doorways in New York City, clanking their pans for the first responders, the police officers, and the nurses, and the doctors. And just a few short weeks later, here they are throwing rocks and fire extinguishers. And how could you do that to a police officer? And here they are, absolutely spitting on them. I watched one, uh, uh, they were, it was live and it was going on in New York City where they were taking trash and they were piling it in front of the police officer's feet and then they begin to light that. And I thought, how dare they? How could they do that? Just a few short weeks ago, man, they were thanking them for all that they did. And here we are. So far, it seems like that was millions of years ago that that happened but it was only just a few short weeks ago. And here they are doing that. And I begin to get angry, but then I really begin to think about it. And should I honestly think that they should do any worse? Brother Norm, they're sinners. And I'll be honest with you, if I didn't have God, Jesus living within me, I'd probably be in that same boat. You know why? Because I don't have somebody dwelling inside of me telling me what's right or wrong. See, they're of their father, the devil. They think what they're doing is right. They, don't, they may know better, but they don't know much better than as far as they're not saved. And I begin to think about that, and I begin to feel bad for them and say, if only we could get out there, Brother Norm, and tell them the truth. If only we could show them the truth of what they're actually doing, I believe that they'd be looking at it a whole lot differently. As Pastor said this morning, there's a lot of confusion. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have a clue what they're standing for. They just know that uh, they're standing for something. And uh, the last time I checked, those that stood for something in Lansing a few weeks ago didn't light any cars on fire. They were actually protesting that they could get their job back. But these people, they're not out there protesting to get their job back. They're protesting to get rid of police officers in general. Well, you tell me the next time that you get carjacked or somebody breaks into your house, who are you going to call? You're going to get your stones and go throw it at the person that's stealing your stuff? We need police officers in our country. And you know what? The Calvary Baptist Church in Whitmore Lake, Michigan, stands with police officers. We stand with state police officers in our state. We stand with the Northfield Township police officer force within our uh, district right here. And you go ahead. You want to light a, uh, a cop car on fire here? Well, I'll just tell you, Whitmore Lake, if you're watching it, the Calvary Baptist Church will take care of the problem for you. We're not going to have that junk going on in our community. But it saddens me that that's what's going on. And you know what I did? I stopped. And I started to think about men like Nehemiah, men like Daniel, that in the situation that he was going through, I mean, you got to remember, they're in captivity. Daniel's in captivity. But every single day, he would go to his house at the same time, and he would pray every single day. And I thought, instead of me getting angry at what's going on in my country, it's time for me to pray about what's going on in my country. And as I begin to pray, it's funny when the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you because your heart begins to soften. And then you start to feel bad for those people and what 
they're going through. And then I begin to think about those police officers. And I'm seeing these people screaming at the police officers and police officers standing there as cool as a cucumber. And I thought, thank God I'm not in his position because it'd be a lot worse of an outcome. But I begin to pray for them. That's what we need to do in our day and age right now. We need to pray. I believe that there's a lot of people that aren't praying about the situation going on. They're sitting at home and they're they're wringing their hands and they're nervous about what's going on. And I can understand that. It is. It's scary. It's frightful what's going on. But as a child of God, we have an avenue and that's God. God can take care of it for us. God knows what's going on. But well, we've said it time and time again. Nothing has happened in these past days that God did not know was going to happen. That's good to know. I might as well talk to the person that knows what's going to happen tomorrow when I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's the person that I want to talk to. I want to talk to somebody that's going to do something about it. See, they're always wanting our government to do something about it. They want their uh, mayors. They want their governors. They want the president to do something about it. I'm glad that I have somebody that could do something about it. And that's God. And he might use me as his avenue, and I'm just fine with that. But I'm glad that we can go to him in prayer. The Bible tells us men ought always to pray. You should walk around with prayer upon your heart. You ever just been driving down the road and begin to think about somebody and just pray for them? Often than none, I'll be uh, just working or doing something and I'll begin to pray and I'll say, Lord, be with Brother Jeff. And then I'll start to see all these other faces in my mind, Brother Norm and Brother Short and Brother Wiggins and uh, Mrs. Valentine. And I'll just, just a quick prayer. Don't know what's going on, but the Lord laid them on my heart. I'm just going to pray for them. We ought always to be praying. I fear that in our country and within our walls of our churches, we've gotten away from prayer. We've turned it into a hype show. We've got all these newfangled churches coming on the scene, and uh, they're nothing more than uh, uh, smoke scenes. That's all that they are. Smoke and mirrors, that's all that they are. But what we need is houses of prayer again. When anything has ever happened in this country... I believe that the outcome of how our country got through it can go back to the knees of Christians praying for their country. And have you ever thought about the fact that, uh, like our preacher said this morning, we are on the cusp of a civil war within our country. That frightens me to death, but that's the reality of what's going on. And you, I begin to think about it. When you tear down statues of the civil war, Brother Wiggins, you kind of go right back to it. You know why? We've tore down those things that reminded us not to go back to that place in our country. But we've tore those things down, and now we find ourselves but a couple years removed from that, and we're already going back to that. I'm glad that the Calvary Baptist Church loves everybody in this country. Black, white, Asian, doesn't matter who you are, you're welcome at this church. We'll love you unconditionally. You know why we'll love you? Because God loves you. God came, or Jesus Christ came and he died for all. He didn't come and die just for the Jew. He came and died for the white, the Greek, the Gentile. He died for everybody. And that's why we ought to have that same mentality. So what can we do? What does America need right now? America needs prayer. We need to be a praying people. If there's ever a time that we need to pray for our country, it's right now. Pray for our president. I, don't, I disagree right now with more things that our governor does, but we ought to pray for her. That's a tough situation that she's in. And there's a lot of people that would like to do harm to her. And I don't want any harm to befall her. And I hope that there's Christians around her, staff members that she has that are Christians that maybe could just talk to her a little bit, and try to help her through these times. But the only way that we're ever going to get anything done in our country is through prayer. And I'm glad that I'm a part of a church that's a praying church. And so we need prayer. Secondly, this is a big one, we need church. The doors of churches need to open back up. God's people need to go back to church. Our preacher hit on it this morning, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Turn to the book of Matthew. Matthew in chapter number 16. Matthew 16 and verse number 18 says this, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The world can do whatever the world wants to do, Brother Jeff, but they can't prevail against the church. 
I can tell you, we can stand firm. And why can we stand firm? Because our firmness is placed in God. And God said, the church will be built upon me. And the last time that I checked, Jesus Christ himself carried the cross all the way to Calvary. He hung on that cross in shame and he died on that cross. If I want to put my confidence in anybody, I'm going to put it in him. Somebody that actually did something, somebody that persevered. I was watching the documentary series that just came out about uh, U.S. Grant. And they said uh, the biggest thing about Grant was is that he was a bulldog. I'm glad that I serve a God that's a bulldog tonight. I'm glad that my uh, faith is not set in something that's wishy-washy, every day a little bit different, but our faith is solid tonight. This church isn't built uh, on Pastor LaFave. And he would say that if you were here tonight. It's not built on any of uh, Brother Emmett that's been here a very, very long time. Brother Emmett would say this church isn't built on him. The only reason that this church has stood as long as it has, and we've had a lot of good men that have come through these doors, Brother Hensley, who was here for 30 plus years, who gave his life here at this church, and our preacher who's been here for uh, 10 plus years now, and they've given uh, their time and their effort, but they're not built. They're not, the church isn't built on them. It's built on Jesus Christ, and that's why this church has made for so long. I'm glad that our foundation is not crumbling tonight. In fact, it's, it's more solid than it's ever been before. And when you turn on the television and you see that the world is falling apart and it seems like the foundation of our country is crumbling from underneath us, we can look at the church and we can say, man, when I go to the church, man, it sure is solid. It ain't wiggling. It ain't moving. We're not having a problem. And I'm glad for churches that have decided that no government, no politician is going to tell us that our church doors are closed because our First Amendment tells us our church doors are open. And I'm glad that we have men of God that will stand in these day and ages for something. We got to get back to church. We got to get back to the house of God. We got to get back to praying. We got to get back to hearing preaching. Uh, uh, live stream is great, and it's been a great avenue. Uh, uh, Lily's birthday uh, was today. Did, did she not, Brother Chris? You could nod at me. Didn't she get saved through the live stream a couple of weeks ago? Was it her? Through the live stream, got saved. Praise the Lord for that. So the live stream works, but there's something about coming to church. There's something about sitting in the pew. You have no idea what it's like to stand up here and to lead the singing to the few that were here. And yeah, they sounded great. But man, that first Sunday that we opened back up and all these people in here and all of them were wearing masks, if anybody's watching, uh, they were all wearing masks. And man, we sang unto the Lord. What a joy that was. I never thought that a scripture verse would be more true than it is right now uh, in the book of Psalms when it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I never thought that I'd see a day and age where they would say that church was not essential. Man, if you would have said that to me as a kid, and I'm not that old, if you would have said that to me as a kid, I'd have probably laughed at you and said, there's no way. But here we are in 2020. And man, oh man, what a year it's been. Uh, somebody said to me the other day, What's going to happen next? I hope that it's the trumpet. And I hope we're called out of this thing. I know we've got our president's name is Trump. And I know that he can trumpet sometimes. But I'm looking for the bigger trumpet that's going to call us out of this mess. But we need to stand firm in these day and ages. Church is essential. Church is important. Hebrews chapter number verse, uh, chapter number 10, verse number 25 says this. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Can I tell you, I've got the binoculars out tonight, Brother Wiggins, and the day's approaching. I turn on the television, the day's approaching. I hear the news from the night before, the day's approaching. The night is quickly coming when we can't work anymore because we're going to be gone or the Lord's going to call us home. It's time for us to work. It's time for churches to open back up and to be a beacon in their communities. Would the stuff be going on that's going on had the church doors not been closed? I, I can't answer that. But I can tell you it'd be a little less probably because we'd still be out there telling people the truth because it still works in our day and age. So we need church. The last thing that I want us to look at this is a difficult one for you and I. I know it's a difficult one for me. Go to the book of Matthew in chapter number nine. Maybe you're still there. Matthew chapter number nine. 
And verse number 36 says this. This is talking about Jesus. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. The last thing that I want us to look at tonight in what does America need right now? We need compassion. I told you I watched that and I begin to get angry, Brother Jeff, at what those people were doing to law enforcement, to other fellow Americans, what they were doing. I, I watched one bit uh, where uh, a Fox News uh, newscaster um, was out there and he was asking people questions and then they found out that he was from Fox News and they began to run him out of there as bad as what they were doing to the police officers all because he worked for Fox News. He may not even have the same uh, beliefs that Fox News has. It may just be a job for him. And they ran him out of there on a rail. And if I, get, and I begin to think about that. We're Americans. I'm a red-blooded American, and that made me mad. Because no matter what you believe or disagree, we're still Americans. We ought to treat each other with dignity and respect. And it's disgusting, but as I begin to watch that, I begin to think, it's hard for us sometimes to have compassion. But the greatest person that we can look to is Jesus Christ. Amen. They would beat him. They would mock him. They would pluck his beard out of his face. They would strip him naked and hang him before the world. And he would look at those very same people. And he would say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's compassion. That's some, that's some serious compassion. And so as I look at that, I think, Boy, Elliot, you need to have some more compassion for those. And that's hard. When you watch that kind of stuff, that's hard to have compassion for people like that. But you know, as Christians, we ought to be. We ought to have compassion for those outside of our doors that don't know the Lord. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 25 says this. Or I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong verse there. It is 1 Peter. 1 Peter 3, 8 says this. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. He's talking about the church, the way that the church ought to be. So many times, I think, in our churches, there's, there's this click, there's that click, there's, I don't talk to that uh, uh, set of people. I'm glad it's not like that here at the Calvary Baptist Church. Man, everybody talks to everybody. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's friendly to everybody. We don't have problems going on in the church. Uh, that's the saddest thing that could ever go on is that there's problems in the church. If there's any place we ought to be able to go and to not have problems, it ought to be the church. Man, let the gossip be at Meyer. Let the, uh, let the problems uh, with the workers be at Kroger. Don't let it be in the church. The Bible tells us we all have to be of one mind. That doesn't mean we're all robots. We're all individual people. You can see that with the disciples. They all were very, very different. They all came from different walks of life. Peter, a fisherman, rough and uh, gruff, and uh, would say whatever was on his mind. There were other disciples that weren't like Peter. They weren't like that. They weren't rough and gruff and uh, would say whatever it is that they wanted to say, whatever came across their mind. They weren't like that. But God used Peter as just as well as he used those other men. So we're not all robots, but we all ought to have one mind, and that's we got to reach a world together. And we can't do that if we've got tension and separation. And I think the biggest thing that people are realizing is, boy, do I need my church family. When the doors were closed and we weren't able to meet together, man, I can't wait to go back to church. I can't wait to see so-and-so. I can't wait to talk to this person and see how they've been. I think that this has been a rude awakening uh, for Americans to realize we need church. But we need compassion. And the best person that we can model our lives after is Jesus Christ. He had compassion. He would look at those multitudes knowing that uh, one day he would go to the cross of Calvary, but he had compassion on them. He loved them. And so many times you'll find that uh, through the Bible where it says that Jesus saw them and he had compassion on them. We've got to do that nowadays. Brother Norm, yesterday you got yelled at for not wearing a face mask and trying to give out a gospel track. That's hard to be compassionate at that point, isn't it? But Jesus would have been compassionate. 
It's hard to live our lives up to him, but I'm glad that we have a good example to live our lives up to. You remember when you used to disappoint your parents? It seemed like it was so hard to live up to their expectations, even though their expectations were so low. In hindsight, when you think about it, they were so low. But man, when you disappointed them and you would hear, I'm disappointed in you, man, that's the biggest, oh, that's the biggest thing that hurts. I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to live up, I want to live up to what it is that he has for my life, what he has for us to do. This is difficult times for us to be living in. But boy, are we privileged to be living in these times. You say, we're privileged? We're privileged. You know why? Because we have the truth. Amen. President Trump, I love him. I appreciate what he's done. But the church house has the truth. What our, what our pastor preaches on Sunday is the truth. And I'm glad that we can still go somewhere and we can hear the truth. We may be able to turn on the news and hear somewhat of the truth, but when we come to the church house and we open the word of God, every word that's in here, every period, every comma, every semicolon, every hyphenation, uh, and whatever else you want to put in there is truth. And we can lean upon this tonight. And so if I can encourage you with what does America need right now, it needs you as a Christian to stand in these day and age. Stand for truth. Be an encouragement to somebody this week. I know it's hard. We got to go out. We got to wear face masks and you can't breathe in this stinking thing. Listen, I had to clean somebody's house the other day. Three hours with a face mask on. Three hours. There was sweat pouring off of me. Brother Wiggins, I was sweating in places I didn't even know existed. I mean, it was hot, hot, hot. And I've got this face mask on and I just want to take this face mask off. But that's the day and age we live in but we can still do something in our day and age, I believe. I believe the church house is gonna flourish from this, or at least I hope it does. And I'm glad that there's churches that are finally opening back up and men of God that are seeing their people again and standing behind the pulpits. You know what I've tried to do through this, uh, through this downtime, I guess you could say, I haven't really taken uh, much downtime, honestly, uh, but what I've tried to do is I've tried to listen to a little bit of more preaching. And just hear what other people have to say. It'll encourage you throughout the week to hear some preaching other than our preacher. I love our preacher, uh, but I love a lot of other preachers and I like to listen to him. And I, I love listening to our preacher. I love our Sundays. We, uh, I mean, he was on fire this morning, encouraging and truthful. And uh, I encouraged it, or it was encouraging to me, but uh, turn on a preacher, turn on some good music and listen to it. It'll help you. Turn off the news for an hour and just look out the window and Look at the squirrels running around. They're not, they haven't been stopped because of coronavirus. Look at the grass. It's still going green. The trees are still blooming. And it reminds us, God is still good. And he's really taking care of us. We may have lost our jobs. We may have lost everything else, but God's still good. We're still here tonight. We may not be here next week, but we're here tonight. And that's all because of God. And so what does America need? America needs you. It needs you to stand in these day and age. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk. And Lord, I know that our country uh, is in shambles tonight. There's not a thing that's happened, though, that you didn't see coming. But Lord, there's many churches on the West Coast that will meet in a few hours. I ask that you would be with them. Would you protect them? Would you watch over them? And then there's churches that are meeting even now. God, I ask that you would place your hand upon them. Be with your people as they try to be a witness this week, and it seems like it's more difficult nowadays for us to be a witness. But Lord, I believe we can still be effective in 2020. And Lord, I ask that you would just watch over us. Would you protect us? Would you keep us safe? A lot of people that want to do harm, a lot of people that want to shut the doors of this church and our community. But by the grace of God, we're going to stand firm and we're going to keep these doors open and keep preaching the truth so that we can help somebody. Lord, would you use this message in a powerful way? I don't know, but by way of live stream that somebody would be watching, I ask that you would use this. Lord, we've heard of one that uh, got salvation by watching the live stream. And what an encouragement that is. No idea how far this will go. No idea uh, the depths of the earth that it'll reach. But Lord, I ask that you would use it in a powerful way. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, maybe you want to come to the place of prayer. Maybe you want to pray where you are. Uh, maybe we ought to just pray for our country tonight as the piano begins to play. 
Maybe just pray for our president, pray for our governor, uh, Miss Whitmer and her husband. And pray for the major cities, the churches that are in those cities. A lot, a lot of good Christians that live in the cities that are being uh, destroyed. We ought to pray for them. I'm going to ask, Brother Jeff, would you close us out in a word of prayer, sir? Amen. Thank you, Brother Jeff. Yes. Yikes. What is his name? Yeah. Yeah. Say his name again for me. Cedric. All right. Let's pray for Cedric right now. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with Cedric and the uh, situation going on. I know that there's been uh, a lot of turmoil in the Grand Rapids area. I ask that you would clear the way uh, for him to be able to get to the hospital and that they would be able to help him. And Lord, be with the family uh, through this time. Uh, and be with Brother Chris. And Lord, uh, I know that he just lost his grandma last week and uh, there'll be a funeral in the coming days. I ask that you'd be with him. And then a family friend that they lost. And Lord, I just ask that you'd be with him. And Lord, uh, we sure do love you tonight. Your precious and holy name. Amen.